Hi, my name's Flossie, and I live in this 1999 Ford E350 step van conversion. I converted the step van myself from a box truck delivery van, in the United States you would call it a bread truck, into my tiny home on wheels with a full kitchen, bed, dinette, and living area. Shower time! Water, and it is very, very comfortable. I live in a van because it enables me to travel. I live on Vancouver Island mostly and travel from there both down into the US, to the mainland on BC, and around the other southern Gulf Islands of British Columbia's inner waterways. This area is beautiful. I would travel it all my life if I could, by sailboat, by van, by kayak and foot. We're almost back. Today, we're exploring underwater. Good morning, everybody. I am early this morning. This morning and today, I'm heading out to the West Coast for a free diving meet. I have been to one of these before and met a bunch of people who share the same passion as me, being in the ocean, diving, understanding and learning about marine creatures and getting to know how to sustainably eat and explore and protect the ocean. And so I am excited to take a friend of mine out who loves surfing but hasn't really got into freediving at all and I'm going to go explore the ocean. And yeah, it's going to be quite special. I'm excited. Here and ready to go. It is low tide about 10 o'clock. And we are here, it's about 9.30 and it's about a 30 minute walk to the dive spot. And I'm really excited to go in. Sharing with my friend uh, a little bit of introduction to freediving. And hopefully we'll get some food to eat today too. <laughs> So pretty. You might ask why? Well, one day I hope to live off grid, supporting myself. And in today's world, who knows what the future will look like. So building survival skills, knowing how to hunt, fish, eat, forage and survive from the world around me is really critically important. I recently bought a pole spear, not a spear gun, but I'm free diving and trying to catch fish. I'm learning now because I know it's going to take a lot of practice to get proficient. This area is rich with kelp beds and for summer, the ocean visibility is pretty good. In summer, the ocean grows lots of algae, the warmth making blooms happen and the water fills up with murky, slimy glumps and the visibility gets churned up. Today's visibility is amazing for a hot summer's day. It's not too murky. You can see a slight haze in the ocean, but the visibility is pretty good down to a decent depth. It's so beautiful. I like this. Yeah? We're being blown this way a little bit, so I'm going to dive this way and you can feel free to swim with me along the surface. Okay, let's go. There are kelp greenling, rockfish, and a number of other species of fish that live in this area. Intertidally, the small fish breed and nursery in the kelp forests. Further out, in deeper water, the adult fish live in schools or tuck into rocks and crevices. Here, there is a lot of sea urchins threatening the kelp forests. Also, they're a very delicious protein and food source, but today we're here to try and fish. I love sharing knowledge, whether it be teaching people what I know, regardless of how much it is. And today I'm introducing one of my close friends to freediving. 
somebody who also loves the ocean, but generally spends their time surfing. Freediving is a new way to look at the ocean, to get underneath it, to get closer to the things, creatures and plants that all live on the ocean floor. It's a beautiful area, the kelp forests bringing beautiful colour, speckled light and a huge infrastructure and nursery for lots of creatures, crabs and other beings that live within it. I love sharing things that I'm passionate about with other folks. I drive my van here, we came together. A few other folks also in their vehicles or cars coming to meet on the beach and to build community. Bringing my home with me allows me to bring my gear and my kitchen and be able to bring all of that stuff down to the beach to make food and eat and share For a first time freediving, this is amazing. Just learning how to duck dive, equalize your ears, and get below the first couple of meters of the surface isn't as easy as it seems, or as easy as I might make it look. I'm so proud of you. You did great. Today we didn't come back with fish, but we came back with a huge handful of sea cucumbers. The sea cucumbers in this area are edible. The inner tendons inside of the cucumber's body. I've seen a few of you comment on my video saying, oh, you should go meet up with Joseph, sharing into the wild. Well, at this meetup we did, we finally met, and it was really a pleasure to meet somebody else who has a, things in common with I, filming, freediving, and enjoying the outdoors. We decided to go out a little deeper than the rest of the group, being able and more confident to dive to deeper depths. There was a pinnacle out further deep with some extra kelp. Now the tide had picked up, so there was quite the current holding on to the bull kelp root so that we didn't drift away, breathing up to get the calmest and longest breath hold we could, diving deep, following each other down into the kelp fronds. It's exciting. The fish are just beautiful and they sit there almost motionless in the current. Freediving requires a lot of preparation. It is the slowest intense exercise I know of. It requires a large amount of breathing up, a certain amount of surface time to offset the amount of time you're underneath the water, and then patience, a slow heart rate, and the biggest breath hold that you can muster. To go down, keep a clear head, look around for you for fish, Make a calculated and slow approach so as not to spook a fish. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want to try one more time. Okay. I felt like when you made a uh, move for that deeper one, I was like, oh, you, know, you should have went from the shallower one. Whew. And then, with the pole spear, take aim. It's not quite like shooting a spear gun where you can line it up with your eye. It requires an offside aim. Something that is a little bit more technical. Here you can see both my friend and I miss these rockfish several times. But I'm still new to this. And since then I've had a lot more practice and I'm enjoying doing so. <laughs> you wanna have one more go? That's a good try. Uh, no, I should probably think we should probably go ahead, yeah. Oh, mine did that too. 
I couldn't help but offer my friend to taste a sea urchin, or uni. Much like sea cucumbers, it's an acquired taste. but creamy and smooth and delicious and very highly prized in some cuisines. <laughs> we are very fortunate that they are very easy to catch. You pick them up off the sea floor, crack them open and they're quite delicious. Yeah, it's the guts. Seaweed poop. Today we didn't come back with fish, but we came back with a huge handful off. of sea Feeling cucumbers. The, the outside rigid skin. Yeah. It's like the fascia release. Yeah. Preparing a sea cucumber for eating requires a decent amount of effort to clean, prep and harvest, but can be cleaned up to create a lot of food. It's not to everybody's liking. The texture is kind of rubbery and a little bit like squid or calamari. It doesn't have a strong flavor, so it can take on any flavors that you put in it or marinate it in. I decided to put a heavy chili umami garlic sauce with it and it is really quite good. A big strong dose of lemon and lime and it's actually quite tasty. It's going to be very big pieces because I can chop it up. If that kind of texture is your jam. We were starving by this point, having dove for several hours hiked in, hiked out, and then hauled all the cooking gear down to the beach. I love sharing food and cooking for others, but hauling all of this after a big swim was a lot of work, and thankfully it paid off. It's good, oh spicy. Oh, <laughs> oh really spicy? Mm, a little bit, a little bit, it's good, it's really good. Okay. Great. Yeah, just wait for five minutes. If I'm still warm, I still can. <laughs> if you're still standing, we can eat some too. Okay. Thank you for testing it for me. Do you love seafood? I just. Oh, you were lying. Yeah, I was lying. Nope. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Real pressure. There you go. <laughs> I feel grateful for the views that my van takes me to see. I feel grateful for the sunsets and sunrises that we see together. This bread truck, a step van, a box truck, has taken me places that I never thought I'd go before in a way that allows me to truly immerse myself in the experience. It hasn't always been easy, but every time I end up places like this, I'm glad I went through the conversion process of building this tiny home 
to take me places like this. So excited about this. I do a lot of work online and a lot of work on the computer and so having a mobile adjustable laptop stand that I can mount anywhere in my van is going to be amazing. This is a very exciting sponsorship offer. I try to really look for things that I know I'm going to use. If I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to show it to you. I'm not, this is awesome. I work online, I can adjust it, I can move it, I can screw it in and mount it almost anywhere. It is designed to be mounted under a passenger seat on the actual floor butt joists that might come in a sprinter van because I have my own DIY van, it doesn't have those, but you don't have to drill holes in the floor for this. So, pretty stoked. Also has two USB cooling fans so that your laptop is not going to overheat. If you're doing a lot of video processing like I am, your computer warms up quite a lot. And I can adjust it and move it and make it up and down, taller, shorter. And it is really good, solid quality material. Like, I now need to figure out assembling this. Some really beautiful thorough instructions, kind of like your Ikea diagram. So I'm excited to do this. And I have a discount code for you and a link below in the description so that you can figure out, is this going to work for you if you have an online job or just want to have a watch a, watch your TV, put, put your computer or your iPad on a mount. It will fit either. See, it's a nice, perfect size. Comes with extendable brackets for different size devices. I'm really excited about this. Practical things that actually help make my life better. Equipment. Making sure that I am going to take care of my body when I work. If I'm sitting at a computer for eight hours a day, which sometimes happens, it's not always fun, but I want to take care of my posture and having an adjustable computer set up, perfect way to do that. So I'm going to read the instruction manual like a good human, figure out all of these parts because there's a lot going on here and we'll figure it out. Now, with it attached here, I can work from my bed and watch TV at night. watching TV for I'm working I do it right here I am in the middle of the woods 
woods and I'm doing that thing where I've taken myself somewhere and I can't tell if I'm following a deer path or a human path. Like here, that looks like a trail. But immediately on the other side of those bushes, it kind of disappears into nothing. And the height of the, all the bushes is a lot lower than what it'd be if it was human. Which makes me think deer trail. So I feel like I'm gonna go around in a loop here just for a moment, but it's worth me checking to see where this one goes. I'm not particularly worried about getting lost. Okay. That just kind of ends. <sighs> I really want to go this direction. I know there are other trails that way and I'd really like to connect back up with them. How? Still figuring that out. This is the very last of the huckleberries on the bushes. We are so near the end of summer now kind of sad. I feel like my summer has been delightful, incredibly full, and incredibly short. I feel like two and a half months of summer is all we've had. And I come from the Northern Hem Hemisphere where summer just goes on and on and lasts quite a while. And you get plenty of days from 20 degrees to High summer temperatures back down to lovely basking warmth. See, look, this also looks like an old logging road. Maybe I just follow this for a bit and see how where this goes. I love this kind of exploring. And oh yes, okay, this looks more like a path. You can also end up very lost because often with animal trails in this kind of forest, they can deceive you into thinking it is human trail and then you get to some place and there is human trash and then you know you're back on the right space and it's really opened up again <sighs> okay great i'm out here hoping to see if i might find mushrooms but i don't know that it might be a little early and this is a brand new kind of area for me so i'm not entirely sure of what might be in this kind of area as far as forageables. So, we shall see. I'm absolutely, absolutely bushwhacking at this point. Oops. Still lost. Still bushwhacking. Currently, the only mushrooms I'm finding are not edible ones. So I'm just going to keep on wandering. But there is lots of stumps here. So if there were to be, I'm in the right area. Just following deer trails. I made it up that steep hill from down there. And something died here recently or was dumped here. I'm not sure. Very, very relieved. I made it. Scrambled up the side of the hill. Quite. Quite a thing. Did not expect that didn't end up where I thought I was going to be. Had to sneak along the side of private property and hope <gasps> so. 
and hopes not to be seen scrambling out of private property. But now I think I am safe. There is a lookout up here, which, wow. There's more animal remains. Maybe there'll be sunset. After this trip, I feel a little bit more confident in my diving. I feel a little bit more courageous in showing other people how to join me in the things I love. I feel a little bit more excited about continuing to cook and share meals. I feel really confident that every time I get lost, I will get found again. I will find myself. I feel excited that next time I go into the forest, It'll be a different experience. I'll look out for new things. I'll have more confidence that I know where I'm going, my sense of direction and my navigation, knowing the forest around me just that little bit more, where the trails connect, where to go in and where to come out. I am learning my land and my oceans, and it fills me with great joy and a beautiful sense of belonging. I hope you find the places that make you feel wild. I hope you find the places that make you feel free. I hope you find the parts of yourself that are truly magical and let them go. Be free. Dance sing, wander, adventure. And if you'd like to do all of that with me, you can join me over on my Patreon. I really want to thank you for your support, your comments. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much for watching. I have a lot more exciting videos coming up in the next few weeks, and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.